And so, um, I'm going to just put in the chat once again um, a uh, I'm going to put in the chat a, um, a PDF file that I've been teaching from. Uh, so those of you who have not been here for a while uh, um, may not know that um, we've been covering the parami, the, um, the 10 parami, and using this wonderful book uh, called Parami um, by Ajahn Suchito. It's a, it's a uh, edited collection of talks by Ajahn Suchito. Uh, and, um, and so it's, it's freely available. And so if you want to click on that before we finish our session today, you'll, you'll get um, a link to download it. So today, uh, we're, the topic is resolve. So um, the topics that we've covered, just to, just to list them, are uh, generosity, morality, renunciation, wisdom, energy, patience, truthfulness, and today, resolve. And we the final two are kindness and equanimity. Um, so resolve is uh, a, a kind of a determination that, that we um, call forth and we cultivate to follow through on our intention to practice, our intention to be free from suffering, our intention to let go of <clears throat> the, the habits that we're discovering through our practice of mindfulness uh, lead us into suffering and causing suffering to others in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. So, so resolve actually uh, strengthens the practice of all the parami. Each one of the parami is in a way undergirded by resolve because we, we all know that intention is an impermanent mental condition, right? <laughs> we, we bring forward an intention. So um, an intention, I'm gonna practice every morning as soon as I get up, you know, I'm gonna, just go to the bathroom, maybe make a cup of tea, and I'm going to sit and practice. And and it's uh, it's not easy to keep that intention. And then and then you know we when the intention falls apart, something happens. We have a bad night of sleep, and we just think, oh, I just can't, or we get too busy, and it falls by the wayside. And then we we judge ourselves, and we think, oh, you know, I'm. I'm such a flake, you know, can't even sit for 15, 20 minutes in the morning. So resolve is, it's a mental quality that we, we all have it, like all of the parami, that it exists within a seed form within our mind stream, and it needs to be cultivated. Uh, and, um, and we can call forth uh, different, different kinds of thoughts, reminders, we can put in place um, certain structures, actions uh, to, to develop resolve to help us to strengthen our practice and to strengthen the other 
beautiful intentions that we want to cultivate in our lives. And, and we need to bring in, we need to cultivate resolve in a way that's wise. Um, because we can cultivate resolve in ways that are unwise uh, and are actually not really in line with what is good for us and good for our welfare, good for the welfare of others. You know, we can we can become really rigid around things. Like, you know, maybe um, you've become rigid around diet sometimes or exercise, or or maybe even practice. Maybe even um, at some point in your life. Uh, maybe you've become really rigid around practice and it's and it's not fit well into what's really needed, you know, in your family or in you know for yourself. Like, you know, I'm gonna practice for an hour every single day. You know, and, and maybe um, that just hasn't worked at some point. So so uh, so wise discernment and also compassion, our compassion for ourselves and compassion for others uh, are really important in cultivating resolve. So, uh, so this balance between being wishy-washy and letting our intention fall by the wayside when it becomes just a little bit challenging or when, you know, resistance comes up resistance, I, I just, I just am still so uh, puzzled and curious and amazed by how resistance shows up in my mind, like all the time. Like, like I know that if I sit down and practice, I'm going to feel, I'm going to be happier. I'm going to, it's going to cultivate a sense of peace and spaciousness. I mean, resistance around other things too uh, that I, I enjoy. I mean, I enjoy practice. I love to practice. And yet, you know, I find myself, you know, like resisting in different little different ways. So, so bringing forward that resolve, bringing forward this, you know, yes, I'm going to get up and do this now. Yes, I will. You know, we can we can put in structures like um, I will, you know, meditate before I eat breakfast, or I will meditate before I eat lunch. You know, sometime this morning, I will meditate. You know, before I have my lunch, uh, or before I start work. So. Well, what, what are the structures that make sense that will support that wise intention? And, and then if because of conditions or because of the, uh, the impermanent nature of intention and uh, that we have not yet established that uh, that intention strongly enough, we we don't you know follow through fully. So compassion, it's really important to bring in compassion, um, and uh, and that phrase that we hear so often in our meditation teaching uh, to begin again. So just okay. This meditation practice, mindfulness practice, Dharma practice is so much about, you know, uh, in Zen, the expression is fall down seven times, get up eight. Just, or fall down a hundred times, get up a hundred and one. Just uh, get up again and begin again. So. And without haranguing ourselves, without uh, without judging ourselves, 
it's Ajahn uh, Suchito talks about, you know, it's, it's really helpful also to bring in a, the larger view of this is for my welfare and it's also for the welfare of others, welfare of the other people in my life, the other people whose lives I touch in widening circles. You know, I know that uh, being generous, I know how I know how I've been so touched by the generosity of others toward me, toward the kindness of others toward me, and how it's it's changed my life. You know, it, it's changed my day, and and it's changed my life in many ways. And uh, and so so remembering that, you know, gratitude and and a, a sense of generosity, wanting to give back. Um, so for my welfare, for the welfare of others, and for um, peace, for peace in the world. Um, yeah, a couple of quotes I, I thought were really beautiful from this section. Uh, on Resolve from uh, Ajahn Suchito's book. Um, resolve has to be developed wisely. It first strengthens the individual will and integrity, but then if you sustain that in relationship to others, resolve opens the mind into a broad field of wisdom and compassion. And this I thought, this next part I thought was really interesting. It penetrates the isolation of the watchful meditator. The isolation of the watchful meditator. And reveals what, what the watchfulness can cover. The rawness that says, I want to be unmoved and and not have to get involved. So he's, he's talking about something like spiritual bypassing that we can, we can use mindfulness as a way of subtly removing ourselves, like kind of going too far into emptiness or spaciousness. I'll go on with reading what he says. The watcher can be affected by the wish to not be here, which can provide a basis for self-view and bias. So although stillness is, use, is useful, it too is not to be clung to. Unless stillness furthers letting go, it doesn't lead to final freedom, the freedom from the biases and standpoints of self-view. So, um, yeah, so resolve is, uh, brings us into engagement, engagement with what is arising in mindfulness. So, so uh, yeah, it's, it, it's always so interesting to, to navigate that, uh, that fine line between you know, a true uh, renunciation and detachment. So detachment is when we, we kind of just, you know, move into uh, a kind of a, it's a kind of a subtle turning away. And, um, and resolve keeps us, this, he's talking about resolve and which co-arises with wise discernment and compassion. So, so these qualities co-arise with other qualities. So it's, it's not just, not, none of these uh, arise in isolation, but 
we look at them, we shine a spotlight on them to, to recognize what we need to cultivate and strengthen. So, so that compassion allows us to open to what is, um, what is difficult to be with, what, what we're seeing, what mindfulness and uh, um, our investigation, a practice of kind of being present with and staying with. So, so resolve is part of that quality of investigation, which when we notice impatience arising, when we notice aversion arising, when we notice judgment, self-judgment or judgment of others arising. And, and so there's a, there's a noticing of this mind state and it's seen. And then rather than just turning back to, you know, a sense of openness or the breathing, we can investigate it and we can say, what is this like? How is this held in the body? How does this feel in the body? This anger, this, this fear, this grasping, this judgment. And, um, and so resolve helps us to sustain that, that quality of investigation, being curious. Resolve because we know that just sometimes turning back toward the breath although it can be very helpful to, in helping us to find some calmness. Uh, you know, in the long run, we also need to, you know, we need to balance that calmness, which can really help us stay grounded and is a gift. And we need to balance that with also discovering how we are clinging to these states of suffering that keep us caught. Uh, so so um, Ajahn Suchito talks about compassion in some very beautiful ways too that I, uh, I wanted to, to share with you. Um, so, uh, in talking about how, you know, we need compassion not to turn away from what is painful, uh, not to turn away from what is painful to see within ourselves and not to turn away from what is painful that we see in the world around us. Because it is really hard to see how there is so much uh, suffering, there's so much unskillfulness, there's so much cruelty and um, ill will and greed um, that is just keeping this wheel of samsara turning and uh, keeping exploitation and racism and and the, the degradation of, of the earth and the, the resources, the sky, the water, you know, like is damaging Mother Earth, the life of Mother Earth and all of the interconnected life forms of which we are a part. So it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to see that, it's hard to be with it. It's, it's hard not to just either just get furious or or just say I I, I need to just detach. Um, so Ajahn Suchito says, compassion is the only way to hold the world. 
It's not that compassion is always about doing something. Rather, it's the intention to replace the contraction and agitation we experience around pain with openness. Sometimes there are things we can do and sometimes there aren't. So I think that's really important. Sometimes, you know, there aren't things that we can do in a particular moment. You know, and, and, but we have this drivenness to be in control, to fix. So, but just that capacity to stay with an open heart uh, is, is so helpful to not, you know, contract and, uh, and have unskillful reactions. And then a, a final quote around um, from Ajahn Suchito about resolve, this parami of resolve. Wise resolve isn't, isn't aimed at proving oneself to oneself or others or at becoming the best. It is a skill that can make, a, can make wise reflection effective by putting it into action and sustaining um, so and sustaining it. In this aspect, it is the servant of all the parami. So it's a skill that can make wise reflection effective by putting it into action and sustaining it. So you know, so wise reflection is is a way of just really considering things. You know, like um, what is just asking ourselves. What is the best response in this moment to this? And, and being with the not knowing of, you know, I might not know what is the best response, but can I, can I hold the question? Can I stay with the question? Can I stay with a sense of openness and not knowing around? Um, whatever it is I'm considering. So, uh, yeah, so I'd like to invite you, if you, anyone who has any thoughts about this practice, this parami of, of wise resolve, uh, if you want to put something in the chat, or if you want to um, ask a question, I'll just pause the recording for a moment. Okay. So let's take a, um, a posture that supports our practice, whether that be sitting or standing or lying down. And um, Arrange yourself in relation to the camera as, as uh, feels supportive to you. One of the um, most commonly used stories from the Pali texts, the Pali Canon, uh, to illustrate resolve is the story of the Buddha sitting down under the Bodhi tree when he began his, um, his meditation, which brought him ultimately to full awakening. And he vowed that he would not move until he saw through the veils of ignorance, which he knew were there 
and we're keeping him from seeing the truth um, in its fullness, its depth, its wholeness. So to draw from that resolve to, as we sit under our own personal Bodhi trees <laughs> or lie down under them uh, and uh, so however that that resonates for you it doesn't have to be I'm not going to move at all if that becomes a kind of rigidity because we're not uh, the the Bodhisattva Siddhartha in his um, in his enormous development of all of the different stages of Bodhisattva hood, um, but it it could mean I'll begin again, I'll begin again. Each time the mind uh, gets caught up, I'll begin again. could mean every time I see the mind judging harshly, I'll remember to open my heart in compassion to my humanity. So feeling the earth supporting us, the earth supporting the body, feeling the breath in the body, the body breathing, opening to the truth that the body is being breathed. and relaxing into that. Trusting that, trusting that the earth supports and the body breathes. an invitation to bring a whole body awareness to your practice. A sense of the whole body breathing. So rather than keeping a very narrow focus or the attention in the body or place in the breath, just a, a wide sense of the body, open, in a way opening to the, the body as an energetic field. You may hold a, 
a kind of a sense of a, the shape of the body, in a kind of a, a soft way. not as a solid, hard-edged object, but a, a soft, energetic field of awareness of the body. How is it experienced, the whole body breathing? in and the out breaths. an invitation to allow the body to be calm, to let go of contraction and tension. While at the same time, while relaxing, at the same time staying Attentive, present, aware, mindful.
The breath can be the drumbeat of resolve, calling us back. So we may form an intention to feel every single breath. And when the mind drifts away, we can begin again without judging ourselves. Seeing that the mind is bound by habit.
as we come to the end of the sitting, I invite you to bring your attention to the heart center. And breathing into the heart center. Connecting to the quality of kindness. Perhaps bringing to mind some being that you hold very dear. Human being or non-human being. And just noticing how does that live? How does that quality of care and kindness and love live in the heart, in the heart center? And imagining that that is a light, a lantern perhaps, just a, like a sun radiating in all directions, filling the whole body with light, with well-being, with care, care for this being, sitting in your skin, on your cushion, on your bench, chair, radiating outwards. Without limit, just allowing the shining of that heart of kindness to extend in every direction. Let's dedicate the blessings of our practice Whatever benefit you've, you've experienced, you've realized in this time that we've been practicing together. May this serve the happiness, well-being, and liberation of all beings everywhere.